All right, I'm about to stick me another bar on this thing. I hit it about two months ago on a bolster and I split the end of it. Lost a couple bearings. I had one bearing in there turned crossways and I tried and tried and tried and tried to get it out and I couldn't. So what I did was I just took me two sledgehammers and I just beat that mother back together. And that thing's been running like that for about two months now with that bearing turned crossways in it. And it's run good. Like I said, run two months. I, I'll look at the date on this bar. I, we always scratch it on it, and I'll tell you how long it's been on here when I pull it off. But so I'm fixing to uh, pull that bar off, get it on there. Here, worthless over there. See, y'all can see me right there. There we go. Starving comedians in the world, man. You're trying to be a comedian. Hey, we got to do a film up there on Kevin's little catastrophe up there at the shop, trying to knock the whole wall down. We got, we got to do a film on that, man. It's all silence about it's that. Fixed. It's fixed now. Hey, something else that was silence was the day you came in all that on the side of that skitter up there too. You notice I never pulled a camera out that day. Yeah, that probably caught your jaw was still dropped. Was like, oh lord, radiator, compressor. Right. What did this fella just tire up? That's what I felt like. Right. I gotta take two bolts out. I'll be right back. I'll show y'all here. These two bolts right here have to come out, and all they do is just keep the bar from falling off. You could actually put the bar on there, put the chain on it, set the tension, and not even run with those bolts right there if you didn't want to. And I'm gonna back them on. When I back them out, then the bar come on off. But they, those bolts right there, just keep the bar from falling off. If the chain breaks, that's all they're there for. Here we go. Look at that. July the 29th. 16. That's how long I've been running that bar right there. They'll, they'll last a long time too. Got the bar on. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw a new chain on it too. I usually, if I put a new bar on, I go ahead and throw a new chain on it. Cause these chains, the bar only is about a hundred dollars, and the chains ain't very much either. And it's just simpler. I will sharpen them. I mean, this one right here's got a lot of life left in it, but man, you hang them up and you bend them and you break cutters off of them, you hit stuff with them and things like that. And 
use a chopper them once or twice and then chunk them. That's what I do. I ain't got time to be. I don't have time to be messing around with something that is not gonna cut. Set y'all right here. Maybe the wind. I've got a windscreen on this mic here, but it's still gonna pick up some of that wind noise right there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, you can see me. Right there. Gotta get that little That's it. Now all I gotta do is just bump the button a time or two and it'll suck it back up in there. So that's how I do that. I'm gonna take y'all around here and y'all listen to this. See, he knows I'm standing here so he ain't cutting up near as much. He put in some, he put in some new shocks on the, on the crack wagon. See it up in there? Look at that. He ain't got a new piece right there. He said the corner's a lot better now. But I got a good question a while ago, and I know this guy is not the only one or the first one to ever wonder this, and it's a good valid question. And I started to type out the answer, but. I get so many questions. This one here is, is just going to be easier just to answer in video form, and I think it I think it needs to be answered in uh in video form too, to where a lot of people can can understand this because there's a lot to this question. This guy's name's Dalton, or so that's what his screen name is, but he says, "Tim, I have a serious question. Really, not trying to be rude here." But do you ever think that it may be creating a reverse effect for you and the other loggers when we run on the few days that we've had rain, a lot of rain, it could have been rain out days? He says, I know you're not the only one, but just a thought. 
And so what he means is, is why don't we on the rain out days, since the mills are so backed up, why don't we just park and, and shut down? We're set up the way that we are to where we can run through the rain, and there's several reasons because of it. When we get rain and everybody else is parked and we're still running, we can also haul their quotas for that day because they're not going to be able to make up that quota. It's not, it's not going to happen. So we can capitalize on that by running. Sure, it puts more wood into the mill, but here's the thing about these mills. They don't look at the big picture. They don't look at things like at a, on a month or on a, even a year. They look at things week by week. These weeks are numbered. Like this week here is week number five out of the year, maybe six, I don't know. But so they go week, like week number four, week number five. That's the only thing they're concerned with is what's going on on that week. So we can run when it's wet most all the time. There are several things that we do to prepare for that, to get it ready. The biggest thing is having our road sealed so that when the water hits it, the water does not go into the road. It hits it and runs off in the ditches. <laughs> So that means making sure all the turnout, the road's crown, all the turnouts are open so nothing stays on that road. And if you get that road sealed and you've got everything ready to where the water runs off of it, you can generally still keep running when it rains. So that's one part of it. The other thing is we can just go in and out of the mills because there's nobody else there. So that's pretty handy. And what's a tree? What's on the outside of a tree? bark pine bark soak up water so if it rains and all these trees do the same thing if it rains and they get wet and they get water the bark gets water in them what happens they weigh more see where i'm going with this we get paid on weight so if we can run we do that and so the other thing too is, is you don't know, you may have, say you may have 40 loads quota to this particular meal. Well, you can haul that anytime during the week or so you should be able to. All right, say you come in and you work Monday, you get rained out. Say you could have worked, it was iffy Tuesday, you may or may not have been able to work, but you didn't, you stayed at home. All right, well, Thursday rolls around and you've only hauled, say, 25 of those loads and you still got 15 left of that 40. All of a sudden, the mill calls say, hey, you're done. We're not taking any more wood. That has happened so many times to us this year. It's been ridiculous. So if you've got an opportunity to work, you better get your butt out of bed if it's raining or not, and you better put it on the trucks and get it in the mill. Uh, case in point, just this week, uh, we had a quota hauled to a mill. We hauled one day, they cut us off, and then the next day, we went ahead and preloaded trucks, which would they would have been able to be unloaded the next day. Had them had two of them preloaded with this particular wood well they said like at 3:30, hey we're going to be taking wood wide open no quota tomorrow you run we loaded the trucks sent them toward the shop to set on them all night you know to go out there next morning we get a text at 5 30 says uh we're not going to take wood tomorrow so luckily we have enough trucks. We just park those two trucks till the mill open back up, put the drivers in, you know, in, in the extra trucks and we were still able to run. And then we hauled those loads out there when we could. So the moral of this story is, is if, is if you get an opportunity to haul and run whether it's pouring down raining or not you better jump on it because you do not know what a meal is going to do right now because they're sitting on so much inventory and and all that but this is the friday's video <clears throat> i was going to do a giveaway today but i was banking on it hitting 
15,000 subscribers. I'm still a few away from hitting 15,000. I'll tell you right here what it is right quick. So as soon as I hit 15,000, I'll give away some more shirts, and I'll tell you how I'm going to do it later. But if I can get it to pull up right here, the sales signal's not real good right here. I'm at 14,876. So I just need, you know, 124 more subscribers, and we'll do some more t-shirt giveaways. But subscribe to me if you like my stuff. I appreciate all your views. Do a lot of stuff on Instagram. I pretty much put up a picture a day on Instagram. Some good stuff on there. Uh, of course, YouTube, Cotton Top 3, Instagram, Cotton Top 3, Twitter, Cotton Top 3. If you want to um, send me a Snapchat on Snapchat, it is also Cotton Top 3, so you can find me there too. Have a lot of fun with Snapchat. I've, I've met some pretty cool people on there. Y'all have a good weekend. Be safe. Don't get in any trouble. I don't want to read about you in the Sunday's paper. So, later, taters.